This video provides a concept overview of the major topics included in Chapter 7, Process Selection, Design, and Improvement. Chapter 7 starts out by introducing us to three types of goods and services that lead to process choice decisions. The first is custom or make-to-order goods and services that are produced and delivered as a one-of-a-kind set or in small quantities and designed to meet exact customer specifications. Product examples might include a custom home or a tailor-made suit, and service examples could include an audit or a law firm handling a particular divorce. In all these examples, each customer or client has a different expectation or requirement and the product or service is just for them. The next is option or assemble to order goods and services. Here, products or services can be configured from a limited set of standard parts, subassemblies or services that can be selected by the customer. A made to order sofa might be an example here where the customer picks a standard design frame and then selects from a wide range of fabrics and colors. Or there's McDonald's made for you system which assembles finished burgers to meet customer orders from standard and pre-prepared ingredients. The last type of good or service is a standard or make to stock good or service that are made according to a fixed design and the customer has no options from which to choose. Most IKEA products would fall into this category and so would an immediate possession spec home. Airline service would also be an example. There are also four major types of processes for manufacturing goods. First, there are projects, which are large-scale customized initiatives that consist of many smaller tasks and activities that have to be coordinated and completed to finish on time and within budget. Examples of projects include houses, roads, bridges, and a criminal legal defense case. A job shop, on the other hand, is organized around particular types of general purpose equipment that are flexible and capable of customizing work for individual customers. Examples would include meal workshop, or H&R Block for income tax returns. Third is a flow shop, which is organized around a fixed sequence of activities and process setups, such as an assembly line, to produce a variety of goods and services. Examples of a flow shop could include a quick service restaurant like Wendy's. The last is a continuous flow process, designed for highly standardized goods and services, usually around the clock and in very high volumes. Examples could include oil refineries or credit card authorization services. This chart included in the chapter outlines the key characteristics for each process type along with a number of different examples. You should take the time to familiarize yourself with it so that you can understand the differences between them. The next concept is product process matrix, which is a model that describes the alignment of process choice with the characteristics of the manufactured good. On this diagram, the horizontal axis represents product characteristics such as demand, degree of customization, number or range of products, and the type of good. The vertical axis represents the range of product variety. A product in a 24-7 continuous operation would have low variety, whereas a custom-built shelf would represent high variety. As an example, an assemble-to-order product with moderate demand and where the products are highly similar and require low or no setup time would likely be a flow shop. I think this describes a McDonald's operation quite well. The next concept adapts the product process matrix to services to give us a service positioning matrix, which focuses on the service encounter level and helps management design a service system that best meets the technical and behavioral needs of the customer. On the horizontal axis, we have the service encounter sequence, which describes the uniqueness of a service based on how repeatable it is, ranging from not repeatable to highly repeatable. The service encounter sequence includes all the process steps and associated service encounters necessary to complete a service transaction and fulfill a customer's wants and needs. On the vertical axis, we have the complexity of a service or the degree of customer interaction, which can be determined by how many pathways there are in the system. A pathway is a unique route through a service system. The fewer pathways there are in a system, the less complicated it is. Services that are highly repeatable with minimal customer interaction is considered to be a provider routed service. Provider routed services constrain customers to follow a very small number of possible and predefined pathways through the service system. College education would be a good example of this. At the opposite end, we have non-repeatable activities and many customer pathways with a low degree of management control. This would be a customer routed service. Customer routed services offer customers broad freedom to select the pathway that are best suited to their immediate needs and wants from many possible pathways through the service delivery system. Customized training would be a good example of this. The next topic is process design. 
The goal of process design is to create the right combination of resources to produce and deliver goods and services that satisfy both internal and external customer requirements. Process design can have significant impact on cost, flexibility, and quality. Processes generally consist of four key elements. The first element is a task. Tasks are specific units of work required to create an output. Groups of tasks needed to create and deliver an intermediate or final output are known as activities. Activities are combined to create a process, and each process has its own value chain or network of facilities and processes that describes the flow of materials, finished goods, and services. Part of process design includes process and value stream mapping to visually document the various tasks, activities, and processes, and consists of six major activities. First is defining the purpose and objectives of the process. Essentially, here's where you begin with the end in mind. Next is to create a detailed process map or value stream map. A process map or a flowchart describes a sequence of all process activities and tasks necessary to create and deliver a desired output or outcome. This is an example of a flowchart for an auto repair shop. Here's another flowchart example for a restaurant order and fulfillment process. A value stream is all of the value added activities involved in designing, producing, and delivering goods and services to customers. Here's an example of the value stream for the restaurant order and fulfillment process. Notice here that we differentiate between value added and non value added activities. Value added activities are those that add value to the customer or product, and the company tries to optimize them. Non value added activities are typically those that don't add value, and we try to minimize them or eliminate them altogether. After visually mapping or flowcharting, the third activity is to evaluate alternative process designs. Next is to identify KPIs or key performance indicators for the process. Fifth is to select the appropriate technology and equipment to implement the process. And finally, the last activity is to develop an implementation plan to introduce the new or revised product. Another element of designing effective processes is to increase quality or reduce errors through something called mistake proofing. Humans make mistakes. We forget things, we get tired, or we just don't understand some things. Mistake proofing involves integrating ways to reduce mistakes. There are four general ways in which we can mistake proof processes. The first is to design potential defects and errors out of the process altogether. So this happens at the design phase. A second way is to identify potential defects and errors and stop a process before they occur. Third is to identify defects and errors soon after they occur and then quickly correct the process so it's error free going forward. Finally, we can employ pokeyoke, which is a Japanese term for mistake proofing processes using automatic devices or simple methods to avoid human error. A great example of pokeyoke is the french fry scoop used at McDonald's to fill containers with the consistent amount of product every time. The last concept in the chapter is a general discussion around process improvement. No process is inherently perfect from the beginning and can benefit from constant improvement. Process improvement generally focuses on one or more of six areas. They include increasing revenue, increasing agility, increasing product and or service quality, decreasing costs, decreasing process flow time, or decreasing the carpet footprint of a task, activity, process, or value chain. As customers, we rarely take the time to appreciate how much work it takes to produce a product or create a service. They don't magically create themselves, and firms put great effort and investment into developing both simple and complex tasks, activities, and processes that turn raw materials into goods and ideas into services that make our lives better.